Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating info boxes using the info box widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page dedicated to this widget, and the designs here show the different customization and stylization options included with the widget. You can set it with background colors or images, adjust the alignment and spacing, or combine it with different section backgrounds and other elements. Additionally, there is a large selection of fonts as well as numerous other typography options that will help you customize your info box so it matches your site design. So let's see how all of these options I just mentioned look like from the back end. Head over to your page and in the element or sidebar search for info box. There it is. Just drag it over to the right. Okay, this is what it looks like by default. It has an icon, a subtitle, a title, and some text. To customize it, we can start with the first bit of text. That's changed here, in the subtitle field. And that's this line in the info box. I'm going to replace it with my own. Just a second. Okay. Right below this, we have the title field. So that's this text here. And I'll replace it too. Just a sec. Alright. And after that, we have the text field. That's for replacing this body of text here, and I'll be changing that too. I want my whole element to be customized. Since this is a relatively big chunk of text to type out, I'll speed up the video. Okay. The next field we have is for changing the icon. You can see that's this icon here, and you can replace it by clicking on the field, and this will open the icon library. I want to use a chart icon, so I'll search the library and use maybe this one. Or better yet, this one. Click on it to select and insert. There's my new icon now. If you like, you can make the info box clickable by adding a link here. I'll just set a hashtag as a placeholder, which will create a button within my element. You can see it underneath the text. Below the link field, we can pick if the link we set, or more accurately that you set, will cover the whole info box as an overlay or not. It's enabled now, so you can see my cursor turns into a pointer when I hover over any part of the info box. If we switch this to no, then only parts of the info box will be linked. Specifically, the button, the title, and the icon. So, just different points that are distinguishable by the changed cursor. I think it might be neater to have the whole thing clickable, so I'll enable the link overlay for the whole info box. Okay, following that, we have the button settings. With the layout option, we can pick the type of button we'd use. The default one, filled, is the one we set here. But there's also outlined, which looks like this. And textual, which is pretty minimalist and the one I want to keep. Once you pick your button, you can choose if you want to add an underline to it. It's set to no by default, but you can switch it to yes and get this look. Then in the field below it, you can replace the button text, like so. After this, we have a section for the button icon. You can click anywhere on this field to add an icon from the icon library. Or you can click here to upload an SVG. I'm going to use this SVG that's already in my media library. And if you add an icon, you can pick if it will be positioned to the right or the left of the button text. I'll keep mine on the right. Okay, below this we have the developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the style tab and see what we have in there. For starters, we can set the minimum height. The default value is in pixels, and when you start to increase it, you won't immediately see a change. Not until your value exceeds the default one. Now, you might think this seems unbalanced, but that's what the content vertical alignment option is for. The default setting is at the top, but you can switch that to middle, or bottom. I'm going to put mine at the top and restore the default height. There. After this, we have the alignment. You can set it to the left, center, or right. As you can see, the alignment option doesn't affect the icon. We have a separate section with icon style settings, and I'll be showing you that a bit later. For now, I'll set my content alignment to center. Okay, after this, we have these two toggle switches, normal and hover. 
Normal is currently switched on and that means the background type option underneath will affect the normal info box display, essentially when no one is hovering over the box. So the background type has two options, one is classic and it allows us to either add an image as the background or we can pick a solid color as our background. The second background type gradient lets us set a two color gradient background. Just pick your first color, the second which you can change gets activated automatically. Then you can use the location option to adjust how much space it will take up. And we have the same option for the second color. Under type, if you stick with linear, you'll be able to shift the angle where the color blend occurs. But if you change that to radial, you'll be able to pick the origin point of your first color using the options available in this drop down menu. I'll reset this now as I plan on going with a solid color background. So I need the classic background type. And if you do the same, you can change the color using this little circle selector like this. Or you can type in a hex code, which is what I'll do. There it is, a soft light gray. Now with this we cover the settings for the normal display. When we switch over to hover, we get the hover color option. Here you can pick any color you like for your background, say this one, and it appears when we hover over the info box. Now I'll also set a new hex code here to get a gray that's just a shade darker than my normal background color. Ok. Following this, we have the option that will let us style the text. The first lets us pick the title tag. So you can pick any of these here. For my info box, I'll stick with the H2 tag. Next, there's the title color, if you want to change the color of your title text. And there's also the title hover color. So you can get something like this. Next, we have the title typography. With these options, we can pick the font family for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then we can pick the font size here. After that we have the weight option where we can pick any of these values to set the font weight. With the text transform option we can make the title for example uppercase. And using style we can turn the title text to italic or leave it normal or anything you like. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line over, under or through the title text. Then the line height, which can be in pixels or ams, can be used to give us a bit more space between the title and the text. And with letter spacing we can create more space between the letters. Ok, that's it for the title typography options. After that we have the subtitle tag option. And for that one I'll set the P tag. Then we have the subtitle color. It has this standard color picker that lets us change the color of the subtitle. And below that we have the subtitle typography options. They are the same as the title typography options we just covered. So I don't think we need to go over them again. I'll just use the weight option to set 500 as the value I want to use. Ok. Moving on, we have the text color option. So any color you like, you can set it here. And the text typography options which are the same as the subtitle and title typography options, so there's no need to cover them again. That means we're done with the style section and we can check out the icon style section and see what we have in there. The first option lets us set the icon alignment. So if you changed your text alignment earlier, this is where you can make the icon match. The settings are pretty standard, left, center and right. I'll put mine in the center so it's aligned with the text content. After that we have icon size. As its name suggests, this option lets us adjust the size of the icon. I'll set 50 pixels for mine. Then the icon color, it has the standard color picker so you can set any color you like. I'll add a hex code to make my icon light grey. And finally we have the icon hover color. Now this one only works if you don't have the link overlay enabled. Let me show you. I can set the color and when I hover now nothing happens. That's because I enabled the link overlay. If I disable it, now when I hover you can see that the icon turns red which is what I set as its hover color. Ok, I just wanted to show you how the setting works but I do plan on keeping the overlay so I'll set this back to yes. And then go back to icon style so I can reset the color. There we go. Ok, our next section is spacing style. The settings here include holder padding. 
which when you start to increase the values you can see, it creates more space around the content of the info box. If you click here, it will reset the values and delink the field so you can enter different values for each one. And that's what I'll do by adding 93 pixels at the top. The right can stay zero, but for the bottom I'll set 103 pixels and I'll leave the left at zero as well. Then after this we have the subtitle margin bottom. It lets us add more space underneath the subtitle. I'm going to put 7 pixels for that. And the title margin bottom does something similar for the title, so you can get more space between it and the text. And I'm going to set 15 pixels for that. Then we have the text margin bottom, which allows us to add more space below the text so you can use it to push down the button. And I'm going to set 29 pixels for this. Alright, after all that, we have the text padding. It's very straightforward. It lets us create more space all around this text here. I want to set different values, so I'll delink the fields and I'll switch to percentages. Then I'll set 12% for the right and the left text padding. There we go. And the last option in this section is the icon margin. By increasing it, we can increase the space around the icon, so in a way it lets us create a buffer between the icon and the text content. I'll set 24 pixels for mine. Ok, now let's take a look at the button style settings. So what immediately catches the eye are the normal and hover switches that we have again. When I hover over the button, it has this movement, so there's a difference in the settings and I'll show you what that is as we go over the options. For starters, we have the text color. When I set the color, any color, you can see that the underline automatically changes as well. These next two options, background color and border color, won't work on my minimalist button, but if you opted for one of the other button types, such as filled or outline, this is where you can adjust their background and border color. And actually, the same applies to these options here, for width, radius and padding. So, given these don't apply to my button, let's see what options do. Let's open the hover settings. And here we have the text hover color. That's something I can change with the textual button type. But right below, the border hover color is something that only works with the other button types. So, now we only have one option that we haven't covered in this section, and that's the typography. It's composed of the same settings we've seen before when styling the text content. Since we know them already, there's no need to spend any more time on explaining them. I'll just use them to set the button text size to 17 pixels. And we can move on to the button icon style. These options apply to the icon that's to the right of my button text. So when I move the slider for icon size, you can see the little arrow grow. And I'll put down 6 pixels for it. There. Next, we can change the icon color, like so. Now, the icon color option belongs to the normal display settings. Under the hover settings, we have just one option and it's move icon. This is like a tiny animation effect that makes the icon move when we hover over the button. By default, it's set to horizontal short and it looks like this. If you change that to horizontal, then you get this look. But if you pick vertical, then it looks like this. And with diagonal, you get this effect. And finally, you can set it to none to keep the icon stationary on hover. For my button, I'll keep the horizontal short animation. Ok, after this, we have the icon margin color. If I start to increase the values evenly all around, you can see how the icon is pushed back. Since I don't need the same space on all sides, I'll reset and delink the field so I can set each side separately. And I'll put 3 pixels at the top and 10 pixels on the left. And that's all. I'll leave the others blank. Underneath this, we have the button inner border style. This is empty because I'm using the textual button layout. If I had used the layout within our border, I would be able to access the options here. But when I open the button underline style settings, we can see that there are options here because I enabled the button text underline earlier. So for starters, we have the normal and hover switches again. Under normal, there's the underline color. So we can switch just the color of the underline without affecting the button text or icon. And we have the same option for the hover display. So if I set an underline hover color, then it would appear only when I hover over the button. 
Another option we have is the underline hover width. We have a version of the same option in the normal settings as well. And I'll show you how it works here. You can adjust how wide or long, if you want to think of it that way, the underline will be by dragging the slider or typing in a value. I'll leave it the way it was by default. Now, other than the underline width, we have one more option in the hover settings, and that's the enable hover underline rule. It's set to no by default, but if we switch that to yes, then we get this effect. I'll switch mine back to no to keep this original animation effect. And that's it for the normal and hover settings. Other than them, we have the underline offset option. It essentially lets us move the underline closer to or further away from the button text. I'm going to set 6 pixels for mine. The higher the number, the closer the underline will be to the text. After that, we have the underline thickness. It's very straightforward. We can use it to make the line thicker. And finally, we have the underline alignment. To be able to show this better, I'll change the width first. Just a sec. So now when I change the alignment from left to right, you can see it moves its place. And the same happens if I set it to center. I'll leave mine on the left and just put the width back the way it was. Okay. And that's it for our settings. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful settings for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more, but it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our Infobox widgets, so we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you. If you need multiple info boxes and you're happy with the one you made, you can simply duplicate it. To do that, right click on it and go to duplicate. I'll make a few more now so you can see how they would look together, but I'll skip ahead with the video because we've already covered the process. And here we are now. My info boxes are all here and they're all customized. Now, I made them this way following one of the suggested designs from the widgets page. That doesn't mean you can't stylize them to have different looks within the group if you don't want to make them look the same as I did. This is just one of the possibilities offered by the Infobox widget and a nifty way for me to showcase the options you get. Now, if we look back over the widgets page, we can see more design variations. Whether you choose to mirror what you see here, as I did with this design, or to create something unique is entirely up to you. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its infobox widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!